late, but we were <laughs> stuck at 36, and the judge was late, and uh, we just got the case finished. So, uh, and it was an important case. Uh, a client of mine who's uh, disabled, uh, Ralph Bunch Cooperative, and we've been fighting for damn near two years to uh, get her relocated to uh, a safe unit and a correct size unit because she needs a home health aid. Uh, and we finally succeeded. The judge ordered them to move her to a three-bedroom townhouse today. So that's been a huge battle. But that's what we keep running into. It's like every step of the way, stuff that's obvious, should be ordinary and regular, it's a battle. Uh, and it, it's been, uh, continues to be uh, a real honor to work with Jerome Jackson because I can tell you Jerome Jackson was fighting when I met him. That is that the, the fight didn't begin when he met me. <laughs> he did fight. He's been fighting for years, and uh, uh, with his family and friends and supporters, uh, and that fight continues and it's not going to stop. Um, I happened to turn on PBS last night, and they had a special about uh, Americans with Disabilities Act in 1990. And uh, the thing that struck me was that when uh, when that bill was stalled in Congress, uh, hundreds of people with disabilities went to Washington and they went to uh, the rotunda of the Capitol. Uh, most were in wheelchairs and they, they wheeled in and, and under their coats they had chains. And uh, they chained themselves to each other, to their chairs, to whatever else they could. And they said, we're not leaving until you pass that bill. And uh, that bill passed, and, and it has meant real uh, improvements, and that's what we fight about all the time. That's what I was fighting on in court today. But the thing I think we want to reflect on, that was 22, 23 years ago, is the, the self-organization of people with disabilities and their supporters, and what an impact that had at that time. Uh, and the direct action. That is that they didn't just call their congressman or just write letters or whatever. They took um, their bodies and they went to Washington and they chained themselves uh, together in the rotunda. And that's uh, a big part of how that bill got passed uh, and why we've seen some improvements in our lifetimes in terms of basic civil rights and basic human rights for people with disabilities. And those are gains, as always, that have been won through struggle. They didn't come from the goodness of anybody's heart. They didn't come from uh, on high. They didn't come from any savior. They came because people with disabilities, their families, their supporters, organized and fought and won those rights. So that's something we want to remember. But here's the bad news. Those rights are under attack. They're being pushed back. They're being torn apart. And it's not just people with disabilities. We're seeing this across the board. And, and in the last five years, we've seen the widest range, the broadest range of wholesale attacks on working people, on poor people, on single moms, on kids, on people with disabilities, on immigrants. You go down the list, and it's a wholesale attack. It's class war. That's what's going on. The ruling class, the powers that control this society, have declared war on working people and the working class and everybody who's a part of that. And we all know that people with disabilities are an important, a very important part of that working class and the working people. And so I think the, what, what we're learning is that we can't win these fights as individuals. We can't win these fights as a lawyer. The only way we can win these fights is when people get organized, when we unite our forces, when we stand in solidarity with each other, and when we say to the courts, to Fannie Mae, to Wayne County, to CLS, you are not putting Jerome Jackson out of his home. That is not happening. And a little bit of background on Jerome's case because Jerome's been 
a paraplegic since he was 14 years old. He's not 14 anymore, neither am I. We're a lot older than that. As a matter of fact, he calls me old man, but he's closing in on me. I keep ahead of him, though. But Jerome on SSI, which we all know is very limited income, less than $700 a month, hard to live on. Jerome was in subsidized housing back in the mid-90s. The only way most people uh, on SSI can live is to be in some kind of subsidized housing because the rent is based on 30% of your income. So if your income is $600 a month, subsidized housing, your rent's going to be $150 or, or something in that range, something that you can afford. Jerome was in subsidized housing. And the service provider, uh, which became Community Living Services, had Jerome's case and said, Look, you don't have to stay in subsidized housing. We can move you to a private apartment, a nicer place, more accessible, and we're going to provide housing assistance payments to you. And that's what they did. So on that recommendation, Jerome was convinced that he could relocate from subsidized housing to private housing with housing assistance payments from CLS. And it was basically the same situation for Jerome, where his portion of the rental payment remained at about 30% of his income, around $150 a month, which he could afford. CLS paid the rest. Now, they came along a few years later, 2003, 2004, and they said to Jerome, <clears throat> these rental payments are getting too expensive, but there's a new program. Housing opportunities, home ownership opportunities for people with disabilities, we got federal funds, we're going to have you buy a house, we're going to provide the down payment, we're going to provide the monthly housing assistance payments, we're going to make sure it's wheelchair accessible, and you're going to own your own home. Jerome didn't go asking for that program. They, CLS, the service provider, came to him and said, this is the program you need to be in. We can't continue to pay these high rents. So you need to buy this house and participate in this program. Jerome agreed to do that. And basically, you had a, a foundation. And the house was built from the foundation. Uh, HUD, through Wayne County, paid the down payment on the new construction. Uh, the house was constructed so that it had wider doors. It had an entrance ramp and so forth. Uh, so Jer Jerome could, uh, have ac could access the house. And the loan application, which is part of what we're fighting about in court right now, and we're in federal court on this case, is, is saying that Jerome's monthly income was $4,200 a month. That's what the loan application says. Now, Jerome's SSI was less than $700 a month, and it says SSI. The whole balance of that income was provided by Community Living Services, CLS. That is, that was the, the support. Uh, assistance provided to him uh, based on his disability and so with $4,200 a month income then he was able to afford the mortgage, $900 a month, 